Hey guys, Bingo Cat here, and today I have a treat for you guys. Sitting right here in front of me is theoretically one of the single oldest computers that can run Windows 10. Now, the oldest computer that can run Windows 10 is actually the eMachine T6000, released in late 2003. The thing that made both the eMachine and the computer in front of me so special, though, is that they both rock the Athlon 64 3200 Plus processor, which is the single oldest processor existing that can run Windows 10. Now the computer in front of me is an HP Compaq DX5150 small form factor business PC, released in mid-2005. And the other cool thing about this PC is that it also happened to be HP's first 64-bit business PC, meaning that the computer is capable of running 64-bit operating systems, which allows the computer to do things like supporting more than 4 gigabytes of RAM, for instance. Now this computer, even though it can support 64-bit operating systems, I opted to install Windows 10 Pro 32-bit because, honestly, the specs on this computer are sort of kind of low for a 64-bit operating system, and I really think a 64-bit operating system would probably run slower than a 32-bit operating system, so that's why I opted to go with the 32-bit version of Windows 10. Now, we will look more at the specs once I actually turn on this computer. Now, looking at the actual computer itself, in the front, it has a DVD-ROM drive here, and then it also has a floppy disk drive. Floppy disk drives don't really come on any computers made after, what, 2008? And then you have two USB 2.0 ports right here, and then we have a headphone port and a mic port right here, and then we have the power button right here. Then the light down here on the bottom is just the power light. The light up here on the top, on the other hand, is a hard disk light. This little light will blink whenever anything's being read off or written to the hard disk. And as you can see, it has an AMD 64 Athlon sticker on the front here. And then it has a sticker that says this machine was designed for Windows XP and is Windows Vista capable. So when I bought this computer, I bought this computer off of eBay for $59. It came installed with Windows Vista on here. I do not think that was the original operating system that it came with because this computer was manufactured in mid-2005. I think it probably came with Windows XP 32-bit edition installed on here. So looking at the right side of this computer, as you can see, there's a vent in the case here. So on the back of the computer here, there is once again another vent in the case. And then here's actually a fan for the power supply. And then on the left here, this is a serial port. A serial port was basically the port that was popular before USB. And it transfers one bit of data at a time. And then right next to the serial port, you have your old PS2 ports for the uh, mouse and keyboard. Um, once again, these really aren't used anymore unless you have an old mouse and keyboard. And most brand new motherboards in 2017, for some reason, still comes with these ports or one of these ports. I don't really get why, but they're still there. And then over here is your DVI display port. Um, this was created actually to replace VGA, which is right over here, because DVI is digital, VGA is analog. So the plan was for DVI to replace VGA, but it never really completely replaced VGA. And now that HDMI and DisplayPort exist, DVI is being phased out as well because the connector is bulkier and you have to actually screw in the connector. So yeah, this is DVI. This computer also comes with VGA. So in theory, you should be able to connect two monitors up to this computer. I've never done it, but you should be able to. And right above here, you have a parallel port. And parallel parts are useful for some computer peripherals, mainly older peripherals like printers and whatnot, but it's not really used today at all. So to the right of all that, there's actually six USB 2.0 ports. And despite this being like a 12 year old computer now, um, it still has a lot of USB ports. I guess that wasn't that uncommon for back then. But considering that my gaming PC off screen here, this computer has eight USB ports, but my modern gaming PC also has eight USB ports. It's like, really? They still both have the same number of USB ports. I would have expected my gaming one, it should come with like 12 USB ports or something like that. But I don't know. And so above the USB ports over here, we have an ethernet port. 
where you can plug in cabling with an RJ45 connector. And then to the right of that, you have an audio in and an audio out port. And then you also have a mic port. And then right over here is a power supply and there's also a little switch here that change the voltage depending on which country you're, you're in. I'm in the USA, so it uses 115 voltage. If you're in, I believe, Europe, you can flick the switch so it can use the other voltage. I'm trying to flick the switch, but it's not really going up. Um, and if you're in the USA, I really do not recommend flicking the switch and then plugging your computer into power. Then moving on to the left side of the computer here, once again, here's another vent in the case. This one actually has a fan in it, so that's nice. On the bottom side of the computer here, you have like little stands that the computer can rest on, the HP logo, and then you just have a sticker. And then on the top of the computer, you have an HP logo, and then you also have a Windows product key, which I'm covering up with my hands because I don't want people to use it, even though it's probably already used. And then the inside of the computer, here's the front of the computer for reference. This is the optical drive. This is a floppy disk drive. And then the hard drive should be resting under the optical drive right here. And then right over here, you got your power supply. And then this is where the CPU rests. The fan is on top of the CPU and venting that way. And then you have your RAM stick in here. And then there's another RAM stick in there. You probably can't see it. And then this is the entire motherboard right here. All right, guys, as you can see, I have everything connected up to this computer. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And it shouldn't take that long to boot up because it's Windows 10, even though this is an older computer now. Now, do you guys hear that fan? That is a fairly loud fan, among the loudest I've ever heard on any computer, but it is not being the loudest it usually is right now. It's actually being quieter than it is normally. But I don't know if I've ever heard a fan on a computer this loud before, before I got this computer. My modern gaming computer off screen, it has liquid cooling, but even before I had liquid cooling on there, I just had a regular stock CPU cooler. And honestly, that thing was pretty quiet even when it was under max load. So let's go ahead and log in here. Um, I'll be back after I type in my password. All right, now it is logging in. All right, guys, as you can now see, the computer is fully loaded. This computer actually does not have a built-in Wi-Fi adapter, but this computer is from 2005, so I did not expect it to have a built-in Wi-Fi adapter. And because I don't have any Ethernet ports in this room, what I actually did was I took an Ethernet cable and ran it to my gaming computer off screen because apparently you can share your internet connection from one computer to another with an ethernet cable but for some reason the internet connection is not working on here anymore i haven't really gone to lengths to figure out why but let's go ahead and just see what this computer is like during daily use so first things first let's go ahead and take a look at the system specs all right as far as specs on this computer goes i actually moved up my camera a little bit so you guys could see it a little bit better um, this is an AMD Athlon 64 processor 3200 plus running at 2000 megahertz aka 2 gigahertz it is a single core processor and the bio state is from November 22nd 2005 this thing has a total of one whopping gigabyte of RAM I know that's just a lot isn't it and then the graphics card this thing is rocking is an ATI Radeon Express 200 series graphics card with a whopping 64 megabytes of graphics memory. And then as far as storage space on this computer goes, it is a 40 gigabyte hard drive, even though it says it's only 36.73 gigabytes right here. Um, Windows has a weird way of measuring how much space you have left on your storage devices. I don't know why, but it says I have 9.37 gigabytes of space left, which really is not that big, but this was a lot of space in 2005. I could obviously not run any newer games on here. You're pretty much limited to games made in 2005 and before. I tried to run 
games like Minecraft on here, but it would not run. So I went ahead and tried to install some older 3D games just to see if this computer could do any 3D gaming at all, and surprisingly, it can. Um, but you have to set all graphics to pretty much to be the lowest graphics possible. Right here, I have the Need for Speed Underground 2 demo, which was released in late 2004. And it will run, it just won't run well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how well it runs. Alright guys, so I have this game turned on to the highest graphics settings possible, and even in the menu, this game is so slow. So I'm going to go ahead and change this game to use the lowest graphics settings possible, and let's see how it runs. Alright guys, I went ahead and turned this game to the lowest graphic settings possible, and it actually isn't running that bad anymore. It's still not running super great, but this does make the game at least playable. I also turned off the music because, you know, copyright strike possibility. But, um, let's just go ahead and ignore that message. You see, there's still mouse lag, but the game is playable. I probably wouldn't recommend necessarily playing it on here, but the game is still perfectly playable. If I were to just drive around um, Beacon Hill here in Need for Speed Underground 2, you can definitely still play the game. It just doesn't really look that great. Oh, this is my favorite part of Need for Speed Underground 2. I love it how they put like Burger King references <laughs> into the game, like Burger King restaurants. As you can see, if I'm just racing along the street here, it's not bad, it's just not the best. And even though this is a 1080p monitor, I could not set the game to 1080p because the game didn't support 1080p resolutions. And this game would probably run really bad at 1080p anyways. Alright, so what if gaming isn't your thing? What if you want to use Office applications instead? Well, Office 2016 still runs perfectly fine on this computer. Let's say I wanted to open up Word 2016. Word 2016 definitely opens, and you can also use all the other applications. Generally pretty fine, as long as you aren't too heavy on multimedia contents like pictures and videos. If you're doing like just text, for example, like if you want to just go and type up a Word document, this computer will be perfectly fine. Like, let's say I type in bingo. As you can see, it types in perfectly fine. And then if I want to go and save it, I click the save button. And it, for the most part, it works completely as expected. Let's go ahead and click browse. And let's just save it in documents as bingo. And it works. I will tell you guys that this really isn't a good web browsing computer. It does not load most websites fairly quickly at all. If you're trying to stream YouTube videos, um, even if you're streaming in 480p, it really does not stream that well. And forget trying to stream in 1080p. 1080p will definitely lag. 4K is impossible to stream on here. Now, because my internet connection is not working on this computer for whatever reason, I decided to just put um, a 1080p video and a 4K video on here just to see how it will run. And this will probably give you a pretty good idea of how watching videos on YouTube will be like, because the video buffers and streams just fine, it's just when you're trying to play it back, it stutters. So right here, the video that I'm going to open is uh, going to be a 1080p video, and it should play, but it probably won't play that well. It's one of my own videos, in case you're wondering. So you guys can hear the music and it is really stuttering and the picture is starting to show up on there but it is going extremely extremely slow like really slow all right casey that's cool but what if i want to watch a 4k video well i don't have a 4k monitor connected up i do have a 4k video so let's go ahead and open it you guys might be able to hear the music but as you can see, there's no picture on this display at all. And honestly, you know, that's completely expected. This is not a 4K capable graphics card. It's barely a 1080p capable graphics card as it is. 
So that's great, Bingo Cat. But what if you want to listen to music? Um, like downloaded music. Well, that actually does work fairly well. I have a song right here. It will go ahead and open in Groove Music. And as you guys can hear, it plays back perfectly fine. So as far as other programs on the computer goes, you can install generally lightweight programs, like if you install Office applications, you should be good to go. If you install really not too graphics intensive games, like older games or games that are 2D graphics, you should probably be fine. Um, as far as watching videos on here goes, if it's not 480p or lower, you can pretty much forget about it. You can't really watch 1080p or 4K video on here. If you're listening to music though, this computer should be perfectly fine. You can't really do video editing or you can't really do any heavy image editing on this thing. It is simply just not feasible due to the relatively low speed of this computer. So my final thoughts regarding this computer, just because you can run Windows 10 on a computer this old doesn't mean you should run Windows 10 on a computer this old. This computer probably would have been better off with just keeping Windows XP on there. As it has a sticker on there saying it was Windows Vista capable, it really wasn't. Um, it could run the AeroGlass interface that Windows Vista had, but it ran really, really poorly. Um, and this computer, it's okay for lightweight tasks or if you're running old programs on here, but if you're trying to run like modern games on here or browsing the modern web, this computer is really not up for the challenge. This computer overall just feels really slow to use and it has relatively low specs compared to modern computers like one gigabyte of RAM, that's nothing. Um, in my opinion, you should have a minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM on a computer nowadays. And a one-core processor is also pretty pathetic. Um, Dual-core processors should really be the minimum, if not quad-core processors. And the computer just runs really loud compared to modern computers. Now, if you are stuck using a computer this old, I highly recommend really not using Windows 10 on here or any version of Windows. I recommend just wiping it and installing a lightweight Linux distribution such as Lubuntu instead of Windows because um, Windows Vista and 7 and 10, which I've all had on this computer and I've tested all of it on, really do not run that well on this computer. And so yeah, I just recommend throwing a lightweight Linux distribution on here. It would probably run a lot better than Windows. All right, so let's go ahead and shut this computer down. All right, the computer is now shut down. Thank you guys for watching. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.